I've made some loop packs and somebody emailed me to say, will these work on GarageBand, iOS and GarageBand on desktop? And yes, they will. And I shall demonstrate. Here then on the computer, I've got a desktop iMac and I'm just about to open GarageBand. Now, if I just go to empty project and choose, it gives me this screen. I'm going to choose an audio track and then I'm going to import some of my files and you can hear that they work. Not only that, we can do things with them. So I'm going to go to my desktop and find my blues loops. There we go. And let's put that to one side. I've got a drum rhythm, first of all, which is something that I just put up, which will match the loops to get you going. So let's drag that one in. And so we've got this drum loop. Notice that it's longer than two bars at the moment because the tempo of the project doesn't match the tempo of the loop. So I'm just going to change that. We can do something with this in a minute. So we've got this. If I just switch the metronome off and I'm just going to, uh, just at the end of the loop, you can hear that it loops back perfectly. There we go. So it went over the join between bars two and three. Now I'll just uh, drag that a few times. There we go. I'm going to go back to my loops and drag a few things in. Let's pick a key. Well, let's go for E because that's some nice popular blues key. Blues bass one E. So I'm going to drag that in. Uh, let's have a look at dragging a couple of other things in. Let's go to the uh, guitar, chord guitar E2. Nice. OK. There are lots and lots of different variations here. Um, so there's so many permutations and combinations. Now, I could actually drag a second uh, chord in. Let's do chord guitar 3. Uh, yeah, something like that. Um, and I could maybe drag a... Um, a, a riff guitar or something. Riff guitar E. There we go, there's one of those. We just drag that in there, close down my window and then drag them all to be to start at bar one, beat one. So I'm just going to take the level down of each of these a little bit because more tracks just means louder. So I'm just going to, actually I'll bring the bass up slightly, here is the initial result. So as you can tell, they all end at the big end of bar two, but I can drag all of them uh, so that they run seamlessly. Here's bar two going into bar three, so you can hear the join. So I can put reverb on any of those. I can do anything I like with them. Now, let's say you wanted to put these in your loop library. Now, of course, they are loops to start with. So maybe you wouldn't want to do this, but I will show you how to do it anyway, because it is quite useful if you're making your own loops up. Let's say I want to put the bass in my loop library. All I do is go to file at the top here and add region to loop library. Now, when I do that, it will then ask me what I want to say about it. So I can sort of character, but I can, um, I can put it in a category. So 100 BPM blues bass one E scale major. Yeah. Genre jazz. There isn't a blues, uh, bass, electric bass, and just put it in there. Now, when I go to my loop library at the top here, the top right, if I go to my loops, it'll show blues bass one E. So if I click on that, it gives me a preview of that exact riff. Now, if I change the tempo, if I want something a bit slower, perhaps, Let's try 80. When I press on this now, it will preview that riff at 80 beats per minute. Because of the preview nature, you may hear a few clicks and pops, but they don't appear on your recording. Here it goes. So you could hear actually on the second go through, it didn't make that noise. So if I do the same with my uh, drums, for example, I'm going to uh, take this 
add to loop library, uh, drum rhythm, I want a drums here, and I'll just create that. And then under my loops comes the drum shuffle. Now, the trouble is, when, I've, when I did this, it thinks there are six beats. Now, the reason for that is because actually I exported it before I changed the temp, rather after I changed the tempo. So I need to actually redo that so that it knows that it's two bars. So if I just go file, add region to loop library once again, I'm going to put it, uh, put it back in there. Drums, create, and then it'll show me that. And there's my eight beats. Now, if I slow this down, oh, it means that then I can put this back in at 80 beats per minute now, and you can see that it's a two bar loop. Uh, blues bass one E, which is what I've done there. And if I press play now, And there we go. Sometimes it takes a little while to render when it's actually in the GarageBand project, but when you play it back on subsequent occasions, you won't get that problem. So there it's completely clean. So that's how you do that. And you can import all of your other loops in the same sort of way. Make sure you start with a tempo of 100 if you are going to save these loops, because it needs to know that it's two bars. Now for the iOS version. Here then I've got GarageBand for iOS and I've got a drum rhythm at 100 beats per minute. And there it is. Now, I can bring in my loops, which I've got stored in here. Let's have a look. Blues bass B dot wav. And as you can hear, that will loop if I just grab that and press a loop, it'll keep going. So if I just go to the end of that loop, you can hear that it seamlessly loops itself. And there it is. Now, if I change the tempo of the drums to 80, for example, notice it will not actually treat that audio. And if you click on here in settings, it doesn't give you the option to follow tempo and pitch like the Apple loops do, or if you've actually recorded something onto the iPad via the mic or audio interface. But if you're importing third party files, you can't do this. However, there is an app that you can use. I'm just going to delete this now. Keep the drums at 80 and I'm going to come out of GarageBand and use the Looper L7 by Audio Kit. It's really, really good. Now I'm going to go to Sessions and New Session. I'm going to go Blues Bass B. Now this may seem a bit sort of a little bit round the houses, but let's not forget that GarageBand is a free plugin. So, you know, it's not going to be able to do everything. You can do this on the desktop version, as you saw earlier. Now I'm going to import audio and I'm going to find my Blues Bass 3 B, which I opened just recently. There we go. And I'm going to just click the import button. Now that loop now comes up at 100 beats per minute. It was worked out that it's 100. And there we are. Now, if I simply go to the tempo control here and type 80 in and then just click outside it and press play. you can hear that it's actually rendered that bass line at 80 beats per minute. Notice it can sound a little granular. Now that happens with all the loops because it's actually having to put information in to make it from 100 in and stretch it out so that it's 20% slower. So if I go to export now, which is actually on this pane itself, if I click and hold there, go to export, I'm going to save to files Blues Bass B Track 1, that's fine. Go back into there, 
and then I'm going to come out of that and go back into GarageBand and then there'll be another the little one symbol on the loops which in basically says that something else has gone in there. Now if I go and have a search around as you can see there's lots going on here so actually it's trying to find that particular file. <clears throat> Browse fi items from the files app. There we go. That might be an easier way to do it. Now when you've got this you basically drag that in and lo and behold it'll play with the drums. And there you go. That's how you do that. So if I'm going to loop that now and go to the end. So you can slow down files using this. Now the Audio Kit L7 Looper is only about three pounds or maybe three dollars or something. So actually it's a really useful way of getting files to slow down or speed up to the tempo that you require on GarageBand. And there you have it.